Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us uh, for the second webinar of the Multilingual Winter Series. My name is Diego, and I will be your host today. I'm super excited. I have three great super guests today, and I will introduce them very shortly. Today, we'll be talking about productivity. Uh, just to make it clear, if you are thinking of AI and technology, that's not what we will be talking of. Uh, it will not be our focus today. So we'll, we'll be touching more on the human side of uh, productivity. I uh, hope you're not disappointed by this. Please stay with us because it will be a great conversation. Um, I, use the word, uh, I use the word conversation because I do want to, to be a real conversation. I have a very nice list of questions here for the host guests. Uh, but I do want to make it as more uh, interactive as possible. So please uh, send us questions. You can do that the, using the Q&A, the chat, or even on Facebook and YouTube chat if you want. Uh, so our friends here at Multilingual will be taking care of those uh, in the background. Also, uh, I know this is a very common question for these online uh, events. Uh, it will be recorded. And in this very moment, we are live streamed on Facebook and YouTube as well. I, I don't really want to take uh, to talk too much because I don't want to take time away from the guests. Uh, I will leave the mic to them now. Uh, I'm super happy to have here Alessia, Monica, and Luciana. Uh, so please join me in welcoming them on stage. And let's start talking about productivity. Uh, Alessia. If you don't mind, you have the honor and the burden to, to start. Uh, would you like to talk a bit about yourself, your track record, professional track record, and your current role, please? Sure. Thank you, Diego. Thank you for the nice introduction. Hi, everyone. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Um, thank you for having me here today. It's a honor to be part of a, such a great panel uh, for Multilingual. So uh, my name is Alessia and I'm the Global Localization Program Leader uh, at the Inca Group, that is the biggest franchisee um, part of the IKEA Group. So I'm globally responsible for the localization strategy across 30 markets. And I've been in the localization industry for um, around 15 years. But the interesting thing is that most of my career, um, I've been working for for LSPs mainly, and it's less than a year ago that made the switch and I was lucky enough to join the IKEA family. So I was able to join the, the localization world from the client side. Monica, would you go next? Sure, thanks Diego. Hi everyone, I'm Monica Foresi. I am the Director of Localization Quality at Expedia Group where I oversee the operations of a global team of quality managers and linguists. And we work together with my team to define the quality strategy for localized content. And within Expedia, we have different brands. And as you can imagine, each brand has its own tone of voice, terminology. So it's, it's a very challenging environment, very fast paced. And, um, and yes, this is what, what I do. And uh, in terms of my background, I started myself as a translator years ago uh, in Rome, in Italy, where I'm from. I joined a startup that soon became um, one of the most successful online travel agents in Southern Europe, to the point that actually Expedia decided to buy it. And that's how I ended up uh, joining Expedia. So I remained another couple of years in Rome and then I moved to London where I'm currently based, although it doesn't feel like it at all <laughs> this, this last times, but I'm based in London and, uh, and I remained within the content and localization, always working on the client side. Thank you, Monica. So this is not a non-Italian panel, despite the name, Luciana, <laughs> will you tell us where you come from? <laughs> Yes. Hi, everyone. Hi, Diego. Thanks for having me. Super excited to be here with Monica and Alessia. Uh, my last name is Vecchi. It is Italian, but I am originally from Brazil. I've been in the U.S. for more than 20 years. Um, it started my career in fashion, believe it or not. I had a small uh, fashion agency back in Brazil when I was very young, had an opportunity to sell very young at young age as well. Um, here in the United States, like I said, more than 20 years working in big companies, high tech companies. I worked at Specialized Bicycles. That was one of my first uh, jobs. 
and they're very technical savvy. That's exactly what they do. Um, I worked after that at um, Adobe Systems where I managed the globalization strategy. So that was my first land on localization, globalization. And I also was a product manager, product marketing, many different roles. I love understanding the companies that I work at and the people I work with. So I do tend to move around so I can understand the business uh, from their seats. Um, I also worked at NetApp where I managed global, started with globalization strategy. And like I said, move around and ended up in product marketing, marketing, running go, uh, go to market team that was focused on competitive intelligence, uh, customer promotions and offers and a lot of good messaging. And from there I went to Peer, uh, Peer and which I actually managed the enablement organization uh, for, for less than a year when I moved to AWS where I am today. Uh, so I, I am at Amazon Web Services and I work with a, little, a couple of senior managers and senior uh, leaders um, on productivity and readiness, focus on the sales organization. Uh, I just want to make sure that everybody knows I am new at AWS, brand new. So I just joined a couple of months ago. And for that reason, I am not yet speaking on AWS behalf. So I'm just going to talk about my experience with globalization, which all those years and anything I can talk about my experience with productivity. I just want to make sure uh, I'm clear there. Very clear. Thank you so much. Why don't you keep talking and tell, tell us what, what is productivity for you? How would you define it? Oh, you want to start? Oh, yeah, Lucena. why okay. not? Sure. <laughs> yeah, you. so... It's very interesting because productivity, I think, means different things to different people, right? Uh, for me, and we had this conversation among ourselves. So for me, what really means is, you know, how well can someone do something um, in a shorter period of time, right? So can you do something faster, something better? Uh, where do you focus your time? And are you being effective, on all those things that you're supposed to deliver in certain timelines. So anything you used to do, I don't know, in like 24 hours, can you do that faster without damaging the quality of the work? That's what I consider being productive. Uh, it depends on the role, it depends on the job, you know, things change, uh, but that's like in a nutshell what I consider productivity is. Thank you so much. And Monica, you come from a completely different role. What's productivity for you? For me, when I I agree with Luciana that uh, productivity can have different meaning depending on the context, and uh, and actually can can apply to all aspects of our life, not necessarily our workplace. To me, three things come to mind when I think of productivity. First is the focus. Um, it is important that we remain focused and we manage our attention effectively, avoiding distraction. For me personally, focus is extremely important. I'm not a big fan of multitasking. I like to finish one thing and then go to the next. So that's, that's the one. Second is reward. I think we need to... to have mechanisms in place to reward productivity because that's very important to motivate yourself, to motivate your team. That, that needs to be this, this culture in place. And the third is um, the ability to disconnect. You really need to take the time to allow yourself and give yourself the space to disconnect because it's, it's, an, it's a healthy habit and it, it actually doesn't slow you down, although most of the time people has the, have the perception that I need to finish this, I need to focus, but then you need to really switch off and give yourself the time and the space to, 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 to disconnect. This is very important. And um, actually, most of the time, sometimes, especially when I have uh, something very serious to solve or a problem to solve, and it's when I disconnect, that I get the, the idea on how to solve it. I guess it's, it's happened uh, to everyone. You know, when, when you're not thinking about it, it's when you have the, the idea on, uh, on, on how to, because this is how the brain works and you need to really uh, disconnect to connect the dots, paradoxically. <laughs> 
Absolutely, uh, Alicia. You mentioned that you you come from the LSP side, right? And you're new in the on the buyer side. Uh, how would you define productivity, possibly based on your, let's say, two roles or two sides of the business? Yeah, so I think I'm, I'm looking at productivity at the moment from a more sort of a romantic perspective. So for me, if I had to define productivity, it would be the, the ratio between the time that you spend working and the difference that you make at a company level. But um, as you said, Diego, my perception of productivity has changed, has evolved during the years. So in the past, when I was part of an LSPs, um, when I thought about a productive team, um, that idea would often be associated with pressure and data. So productivity measured through KPIs, through OKRs, um, how much work you manage to process within a given timeline, um, how much revenue uh, um, you're generating, are the margins good enough, um, are you delivering on time, um, is quality up, up to expectations, etc. Um, whereas my current perception at IKEA um, is not associated with pressure, it's more when I think about a productive team nowadays, I think about a team that feels um, empowered and is happy to contribute. So um, I would say that for me um, is how, how well we respond to the needs and the, and the vision of the company and how we help the company to actually make a difference. Um, of course, productivity for me is still associated to objectives, appraisals, a way to measure them. But there are different criteria that um, come into play and I'll be happy to discuss uh, a bit later on. Yeah, that was actually my, my next question. Uh, how do you think that company culture, for instance, and maybe also leadership style affect productivity? Uh, are there any, uh, uh, is there any other factor that can affect productivity in your opinion? Let, let's keep talking with you, Alessia. What do you think? So I think that definitely the company culture and the leadership style do make a massive difference. So um, in, in recent years, there's been a lot of noise about um, agile methodologies and how to implement the frameworks within agile um, in companies that are not necessarily IT related, because that would en enhance um, and foster productivity. Uh, but for me, the important point here is that um, unless there is a mind shift in the way this is perceived, unless there is a change that uh, should um, happen first at management level, so top down, um, even if you apply new methodologies um, that are within Agile, it won't make any difference in terms of productivity. So just to give you one example, uh, when you think about um, high performing teams, uh, you would think about um, teams that work in a, in a space that they feel safe, where they can unleash their potential, when they can be, where they can be creative, uh, where there is um, a continuous learning environment that is fostered. Um, it's basically, um, we're talking about employees that are not afraid um, to, to speak their mind um, uh, because they know that they are allowed to make mistakes because risk is part of the game, basically, as long as you learn from, from your mistakes. And this is something that I learned, um, you know, being part of the um, IKEA company culture. Um, I think it's very, very important. Our culture is based on, on some core values. And um, two of them that are paramount uh, related to productivity, I think, um, are give and take responsibility and lead by example. Those are really, really important to me. And uh, I feel that they, you know, um, they are very close to me on a personal level as well. Because um, I know for a fact that if you work in a company where you experience blaming culture, or there is finger pointing, if something goes wrong, they look for a scapegoat, something like that, you know, it's not a healthy working environment. So in that environment, a team wouldn't blossom or wouldn't be able to express their potential. They would just stick to their job specs and they would never go the extra mile. Yeah, I love the, the culture of mistake that you mentioned. Uh, which seems a paradox, but I, I, I agree with you. And Monica, uh, company culture is very strong at XP as well. It is, it is. I agree with, uh, with Alessia. There is a strong 
uh, set of values that uh, Expedia really stand for, allowing the, the employees to, to, to work in a safe environment, uh, take risks, make mistakes and uh, choose uh, different paths without uh, being f f fearful of making mistakes because you sh you, we are allowed, we need to allow ourselves to make mistakes, to, to better understand and to, to, to change if we need to or to, to, to move forward. This is extremely important, and um, and yeah, the, the, it also um, helps people to 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 feel motivated, to feel engaged. It's much easier to be feel engaged in an environment that uh, gives you the the freedom to to express yourself and and learn from your mistakes. It's it's really vital. I love, you have a quote about culture, right? Uh, behind yes, it. yes, for <laughs> simplicity. Yes, this is one of the values at Expedia. Yes, of course, in a complex environment, as you can imagine, big corporation like Expedia, you, you, the, the, the productivity, to, to increase productivity, you need to, you need to, 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 to find ways to simplify and reduce waste so there's uh, there's the it's one way to go to to also choose the right path thank you monica luciana you come from a very big company i would say <laughs> one of the biggest the biggest in the world uh, how, how how is that how's the culture of, uh, really in relation to productivity in aws yeah. yes of course like i said i can't speak for for aws i can talk about my experience right but i I, I just want to reiterate something that, you know, my, my colleagues like Alicia and Monica mentioned, you know, the productivity and culture of the company and the team, because sometimes it's not the culture of the company, but certain teams, uh, it, they are very, like, they're highly correlated, right? And I think that uh, a culture of the company that, you know, allows people to have their personal time, not just allows but also, you know, talks about it constantly and opens up for uh, the teams to have their personal time, especially now that we moved, you know, with COVID, we are all online, we are all working over time, we are basically wake up online and go to bed online. So we're working long, long hours. It does not mean we're being productive. Not everybody's being productive, um, but it just means everybody's online and everybody's on. So we, which we need to be careful, right? And I just think that's a big thing that our companies need to look for. And I love um, that to hear about lead by example, because even if you work in a company that has a culture of uh, you know, working long hours and over time, we do as managers and as leaders, we need to lead by example and really tell our teams uh, that they are allowed to have their personal time, right? I'm very personal with my teams, not just here at WS, but any company that I worked for. And I always ask them to take their own time. And sometimes I'll give them PTOs. I'll say, hey, I, I've seen you. I saw, I saw you working over time. I saw you working over the weekend. Just this is my gift to you. Please, you know, take tomorrow off. Or I would tell them, you in your birthday, I don't want to see anyone in front of me. <laughs> just take your birthday day off, you know, do something, just relax, whatever you do. So it's just little things like that that we help our teams and empower them, right, to actually be more productive. Because when they are online, when they're working, they're really focused. Uh, to Monica's point, right? Like, you know, you can focus. I, I am a big multitasking person. Um, I, I do focus by multitasking. Uh, in fact, I love music. So I'm constantly listening to the music to help me focus. Uh, and I am doing usually two, three things at the same time, but this is how I function best. In fact, I had teams that would tell me when they see me focus in one task only, they were scared. Because I will find every single detail <laughs> to talk about, right? Because I'm extremely focused. So, um, so that's that's how I function. But that's what I believe, uh, Diego, for companies, right? It's not just the company culture. We talked about high performers. Um, high performers, they do not necessarily are working overtime. Right, they are not spending a lot of hours. They know what their strengths are. They know what they're good at, and they spend time there. Right, uh, which is a different way of looking at focus. So I, I think that, like I said, I would just reiterate: as managers and as leaders, we just need to help our teams 
even if the company is not necessarily opening up those conversations, to let them know that they need uh, to spend time and have their personal time um, and use that wisely. And we need to help them get there. Yeah, I, I agree that we should lead by example. Uh, I have a question that in relation to, to my experience. Uh, I, I think I'm very free in relation to what I uh, give to my employees and to my team. I mean, they, they know that I always tell them that they can take free time, that they need to be focused. It's not the quantity, it's the quality of their time at work. But sometimes they, they tend to not understand this. I mean, they tend to, uh, to think that they need to stay there. And they ask me for permission to leave five minutes earlier after like nine hours. <laughs> How can I overcome this? I mean, and it's a question of uh, culture, as you said, but it's, it's difficult for them. I think many people are not used to to have such such freedom, probably. What do you think, Luciana? I mean, my team is much uh, smaller than yours, but <laughs> than your company, of course. But uh, it's just something that they would like to understand. How can I make them understand that they can take free time? Is it you just know, giving it, it, an example? Yeah, you have to lead by example, right? You have to take, and I think it starts with us, we need to take some time off because if our team uh, see us not taking time off, working during the weekends, responding emails in the middle of the night, it's, it's, it's just a, like it sends a message to them, right? That in order for them to gain trust with you and then fully, you know, be involved with the projects that they need to do the same. So I do my best, like for all over the years, I really do my best on anywhere I work uh, to avoid sending them things over the weekend or, you know, late at night. If there are projects or things that are happening that we know it's due on Monday, that we know, I will deeply apologize and say, hey, we might need to spend some time. Uh, but, it, but it has to have a meaning and it has to have a reason. And it's not always. They, they, I think the word is consistency, right? Like how often you do those things. So that's my recommendation. And that's what I, works for me. Um, and it's very tough, like I said, nowadays after COVID that we are all online, it's not easy. So we do have to make an effort, uh, regardless the size of the company, regardless the size of the teams. Um, we do need to set boundaries and help them, right, to to be able to um, to focus, like you know, Monica was saying, uh, but without having those long hours of work. Yep, thank you so much. So we we already discussed that a little bit, but so. Can you confirm, Monica, if there's a link between happy employees and, and productivity? Of course, I think uh, it's a natural link. <laughs> I have never met anyone who was um, unhappy in, the, in their workplace and, and being productive. It's a matter of motivation, of engagement, of focus, of, uh, of course, if, if you completely disengage with what, 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 what your work require you to, requires you to do, it's, it's you're going to spend twice as much the time that that that, that another engaged person could could potentially spend in the same task it's uh, it goes without saying that engagement and motivation are key to 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 productivity um it's much easier to do something that you like doing and you're passionate about it and uh, and and if not if you if you disengage totally with the and you don't like the, the the environment that's why the environment is very important the company culture the leadership the management um i think we need to try to within the within the, 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 the possibilities, we need to, uh, managers need to be uh, as flexible as, uh, as they can be to accommodate um, individual in, individual needs. For example, I'm not at all a, a morning person and I function much better in, uh, in the later hours in the day. And, uh, but there are people that are very, and I, I, I respect that in, uh, in, in the team because I can see that I can, 
clearly see that, that, that the working patterns are different and that there are people that are more productive in the morning and uh, people that are more productive in the evening, sometimes in the, in the night. But that's, of course, we don't require them to, to work at night. But just to, to express that there is a difference there that uh, some flexibility could potentially also help to, to, to increase it, to raise engagement. Yeah, I think it's very scientific that there is a link between uh, employee satisfaction and productivity. I, and I wonder why really there are some toxic, lead, toxic leaders around. I mean, that that's really weird. I mean, it doesn't work. <laughs> How come? But well, that, that's just my comment. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Alessia, would you tell us a bit more how, uh, what's productivity in your company and how it's fostered and maybe how it's measured, if you can uh, tell us something about that? Yeah, sure. So um, productivity uh, for IKEA, I would say that is, um, uh, I would say that is a tangible progress, a, pro a progress that you can measure towards the company vision. And the company vision at IKEA is to create a better day life for the many people. So um, every department within the company, obviously it's a really big company, so every department contributes in a different way. So obviously I can um, speak on behalf of, uh, you know, the localization department and um, the localization strategy. Uh, for me, there are two main points here. So the first, um, the first way that we can um, help productivity um, and help reach the company vision is to, um, you know, uh, through the multilingual communication that enables us to, to reach the many. So that means making um, localized content available and making sure the content is written in the IKEA way, reflects the IKEA concept, the tone of voice. And I'm talking about localized content that is um, both for the co-workers, but also external communication. And uh, external communication is particularly important because if it's not released in a time manner, uh, in a timely manner, it, it delays um, sales and the product launch. And the, the second factor here, when it comes to again um, helping to reach the company vision, is um, to optimize, so do more with less. And I guess that that resonates with most companies nowadays. So that would be in line with some of the core values, again, that we have um, that are renew and improve, um, be different with a meaning, and be cost conscious. So in that case, um, I'm really focusing together with the digital department on the digital transformation and implementation of new technologies. Okay, thank you very much. And um, has this changed? Has productivity meaning changed now that we are all working remotely? I know you are working remotely, Monica is as well. I'm not sure about Luciana. I am today. I'm going to the office every day because I'm more productive there. Uh, what's your opinion on that? Is this changed nowadays? The way it's measured, the, the way it's considered. You can choose who, come, who go, goes first. Monica. I can, yeah. <laughs> I, I think... I. Definitely. Um, I, my personal experience with working from home is 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 uh, it's it's a roller a roller coaster adventure, and uh, and th there are times where I feel very comfortable, times where I I really feel that I'm completely disconnected from from my re workplace and my reality. So it's a bit challenging at times, but um, I've learned to to build a discipline. And uh, and I try to to really draw a, a line between the, the the work and and my private life. And I guess everyone has experienced the the feeling of not having uh, everything is fluid. How do we? Do, where do I draw the line? How do I draw the line? I'm 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 working and I'm and I'm dealing with my personal things at the same time. I'm, I'm thinking about people. Uh, that need that have small children at home and they they need to homeschool them and then babysit them it's it's must be very challenging so the work patterns of course have changed and uh, and it's difficult to find the 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 right balance and uh, i guess it's been a very big challenge for everyone especially 
considering the diff different individual circumstances that people may have. Um, it's not been the same according to the different locations and different countries, but uh, but yeah, it's been a very long adjustment period that we we have all, we are still experiencing. Um, and yes, that's that's also part of our uh, as managers a responsibility of being understanding of the situation and 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 allow flexibility that there's it's as obvious as that really but uh, yes i guess it's um being productive at home for me it's much more difficult than in the office in the office i can uh, focus easier i also uh, I like also the the idea of being productive by exchanging ideas with my colleagues, and uh, you know the the creativity side. It's much better, it works much better in an office than than at home. I feel, at least personally speaking. Um, but yeah, this is this is probably what I miss the most. Thank you, Luciana. What what do you, mm. what do you say about this? Yeah, I you know I do think productivity. Um, well. I do think it, it did change productivity, you know, after COVID, but at the same time, when I look back, right, I was just thinking about it when I look back um, and I had to look into productivity uh, before COVID, you know, for a company that I worked for at that time, we were looking, the way we're looking at productivity is like for sales, for example, was how fast can we hire, how fast can we ramp, right? And how fast can we get them to do their first call, their first win? So we, and that to me hasn't changed. It's still the same. Like it just has not changed. The difference is how you ramp them to Monica's point, right? Like the human contact, we don't have that anymore that we put, you know, all these people in a room, we have them in person uh, and you have all those connections. So that is the piece that it's completely uh, transformed. Right, it's it's different, um, but I do think that regardless that what happened, you know, like I was in a, a different company when COVID hit, so seeing that and that's in and my team was a big team, and different stages of their lives, so that to me was transformational because that's where I had to implement a lot of individualization on how I worked with them and on my expectations with them because they they had different backgrounds, you know, some of them had just brand new babies, others were living alone, right, for too long, and they, they wouldn't go out, and, and so I had to have more check-ins. Uh, others were actually um, um, sharing an apartment with three other people who work in three different companies, and they were not set up to be working online, right, and they're listening to each other, which we're not supposed to. So it was very challenging. It was very, very challenging just to go through that process. And, and my focus at that time was really the people, right? It's just getting them through that time and getting from them time together. Um, and and, it's, and, it, and it, they were not always happy. Right, and talking about productivity, yes, you know, I do believe like happy people produce more. Uh, so it was challenging not for them, but it was challenging for the managers, and they're looking up to us to make those decisions and help solve their problems. Um, so, but we went through that process and and it kind of winded down a little, right? We all kind of learned how to, you know, live in this new normal. Um, but you still see like it's just taking too long. Like how long can we handle that? So I, I, I am, a, you know, Brazilian. I love to be in person. I was always in the office, even when, when I was never required to. There were times that all my teams were globally dispersed. And yet I love going to the office. Um, a little bit about it is I always had like food, <laughs> you know, Brazilian chocolates, Brazilian goodies. I always had food, drinks, uh, coffee. I'm addicted to my Nespresso machine. Um, so people knew, like all like my peers and people not even on my team, they'll come, they'll stop by the chat. So I do miss that. I do miss having that connection um, and have that, you know, the time that you just look at the corner and you can ask someone something quickly. Uh, but nowadays there's also technology. You know, we're all using different technologies that you can, you don't lose that contact. Uh, it's just different. Like it's just like a personal um, uh, preference. Yeah, uh, Alicia, you landed the job at Inca Group when you, COVID was already there, right? So there's been no change for you, I guess. <laughs> but maybe you can tell us something about the current situation 
and how do you manage with you know yeah, personal so relationships me, as well <laughs> for me it's been super weird because it's the first time I, I started a job remotely and I'm still working remotely so I was supposed to move to Sweden a year ago and the move never happened so I was shipped the, the laptop I was basically set up remotely and um uh, you know, I've never met anyone from my team or my line manager in person yet because traveling is not allowed. So obviously, um, you know, it, this new normal has sort of been the, the only normal I know so far. So I'm hoping that things will change soon and, and we'll go back to to the previous uh, reality that we that we know and we miss because um, all of, uh, you know, what, what Luciana said really resonates with me. I'm a people's person. I like going to the office. I like hugging people I like, you know, having coffee with them, having that chat. So um, I would say that, uh, you know, just going back to, to the initial question when, when uh, you know, productivity and how that um, COVID has impacted productivity. Um, I was, you know, in my head, you know, there were just three elements that, um, that uh, sprang to mind. Um, for example, um, the fact that, uh, you know, working from home and the perception of uh, working remotely, um, I think it's um, related to, to trust a lot. So different companies have a different attitude towards remote work. And if I may say so, it's sometimes also linked to um, a specific culture or country. Because uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Diego and Monica, but I've got the feeling that, you know, in Italy, remote work is still looked at uh, something like, you know, somebody's working from home, but they're still working while they're doing something else. Um, and then the second element is um, um, like uh, Luciana and Monica were saying, like, you know, uh, yeah, there is flexibility in the sense that we don't need to commute. And, and people think that we might end up having more time for ourselves. But is that really the case? Or just because the laptop is always there when we wake up and when we go to bed, like, like, like Luciana said, um, I guess that we um, are actually working more and it's more difficult to disconnect. And um, not long ago, I read, um, I saw this kind of uh, joke online that I thought was really funny and said at the same time, it was, uh, was saying, am I working from home or am I living at work? So that actually, I think that this sums up quite well what I'm trying to say. And then the third element that I think is uh, really important um, is that um, I think all of us um, at some point have gone through ups and downs, um, have found it difficult to focus um, and um, or even felt demotivated because of this whole situation. And um, I think that that's when, you know, again, the being an happy employee, feeling appreciated, having, you know, uh, regular contact, not only with your colleagues, but with your line manager, is really, really important to keep the mood up. And um, at IKEA, for example, we had the, um, the chance to, to, to have uh, quite a few mental wellness uh, webinars. Um, and they were basically arranged ad hoc uh, during the COVID times to, to sort of give, um, you know, the, the co-workers the tools to, to deal better with uh, stress and were related to mindfulness as well. So, you know, they're trying to help as much as they can, although it's kind of uh, difficult. So do you think it is, there is still a need for that? Now that we're not post-COVID, but COVID started a long time ago, do you think there's still a need for such kind of being close to the employees or has think, this changed? I think my personal opinion is that it's more needed now than it was a year ago, because I think that nobody really realized that this was going to last for so long. And people are, are starting to feel drained. I think it's been, um, I mean, in Italy, it has been full 12 months uh, since the first lockdown. Some countries have experienced that a bit later on in the year. But I feel this this feeling of exhaustion, of feeling like, oh, what? we don't even ask anymore, what are you doing on the weekend? It's like, oh, I'm going for a walk. That's all I can do. <laughs> Since I can't remember the last if time. If you're lucky. Now, <laughs> if you're lucky. <laughs> and, you know, I shouldn't be complaining because we are, you know, um, I got my job off uh, last February. And I know a lot of people that got job offers from other companies than them when I got withdrawn. So I have a job, I'm healthy, my family is fine. I really have no reason to complain. But it's just that this um, current lifestyle is so different from what I was used to. 
and a big component of my current role would be sort of, uh, you know, to travel and go and meet people in different countries and that never happened. So Zoom has been my best friend <laughs> over the, 12, the last 12 months. But. Yeah, but there's a question related to that. But first, there's a comment more than a question that I don't want to, to ignore. Uh, and the comment says, it's anonymous. <laughs> it says, I have a strong suspicion that the general strategy for maximizing productivity at many large corporations is simply this. Ready? Okay. Give everyone more work that can possibly get done. <laughs> Peer pressure keeps everyone working as hard as possible and project managers harass people for anything critical that needs to be pushed ahead. How often do you see this? <coughs> Anyone? <laughs> um, I, I, I can't speak about what I've seen, right, like, like that I've seen, especially uh, when COVID hit. Um, I, don't, I don't know, you know, maybe this is something that this person is experiencing, but I don't think as a company we think that way. Like, uh, again, leading by example, right? I have not worked in a company that is necessarily thinking, let's just give them more work. Uh, I ha what I have experienced myself is um, what can I, can I do things better? Can I do things faster? And that comes with experience, right? The more experienced you are, or the, you know, if you see the same problem over and over you, and you solved it that one, two, three times in different ways, the fourth time, you're gonna be better. You're gonna be faster. You're gonna know the solution. So you're being more productive. And sometimes that's where maybe managers sometimes are, you know, challenge their teams, right? Like I like being challenged on having something or having more different things to do. Um, so I've seen that on that end, right? But I don't think it's purposeful that companies are going and saying, hey, I mean, I can only speak for myself and my experience, but I haven't seen purposefully companies go and say, oh, let's just give them more things and see how they can handle because it's not their interest. At the end of the day, the interested is that everyone succeeds because if we all succeed, the company succeeds, right? Now, if maybe you work in a certain team on a certain uh, group that does have somehow that let's, let's do as much as we can, I think it's our responsibility, individual responsibility to stop and ask the question, you know, you know how, what's the urgency? And sometimes we take on projects, we don't ask those questions, right? What is the urgency? What's the priority? And, and ask the manager to help you prioritize things versus just saying yes for everything. Mm -hmm. And I think that's part of the, the process. It's really to not push back, but to ask the right questions and how, ask your manager to help you prioritize. It's not a weakness. I love when my team comes to me uh, and ask me for help and help them prioritize and help them understand the urgency because it helps them be more productive. Yeah, thank you so much. I totally agree. Alicia, Monica, do you want to add something on this? Yeah, I agree. I agree with Luciana. And I said, I don't see more work. Um, I don't have the perception that there is more work pushed to, to people. Uh, I can see that there is um, maybe the, the perception that um, because of the, the difficulties that we have to juggle private life and work working hours, maybe there is a perception that maybe not but it's it's a possible answer there's uh, the perception doesn't help because of course we are constantly um online uh, what i can say what i can tell for sure is that uh, since I'm, i've been working from home I, I i attend calls outside of my working hours which i wouldn't um have the habit to do so often before and this is a sign of you know uh, I'm not having a social life anyway, so I really don't, I'm, I don't mind. But uh, but it's a sign of how how the the, the work patterns have changed, and uh, and and it's true that we are taking more time from our personal time that more, more often than before. So, but I also try to be very disciplined, as, as I said before. So if, if it happens, I I would compensate. So that needs to happen, and if. And to Luciana's uh, point, I agree totally that we need to talk to our manager and prioritize. We, we shouldn't be working more. We should 
be able to identify what the priorities are for us to focus on and what we need to continue to deliver. I think this is this is the piece of advice that I would confirm um, as, as the most important thing. There's no harm in asking your manager and, and the people who ask uh, are people who feel responsible of what they're doing. So I would I would go for it. So work smarter, don't work longer, I would say. Mm-hmm. Yep. Alicia, do you want to add something? Um, I'm just thinking about some past experiences I had and, you know, they were not COVID related, but um, um, economy is always a cycle. So if it's not COVID, um, I remember the financial crisis back in 2009 and I was in London. There are always some constraints that go and uh, have an impact on the company budget and uh, that usually has, uh, and I'm talking about LSPs mainly just because, you know, my experience of the client side is still quite new. Um, but usually what happens when there is, um, uh, you know, an economic constraint is obviously a recruitment freeze. So what happens is that LSPs are uh, often under pressure. They always have to, always, they, they, they often have to accommodate, um, you know, a higher volume and amount of work, uh, counting always on the same number of people. And that always uh, that usually happens also when you when you win new clients you don't get the the heads in, in advance but you get the heads only when the work is already there and the revenue is already there so it's always sort of a playing catch up so I don't know whether the, the question was um, because I read in the question that they were referring to large corporations and you know I'm talking about mainly LSPs and uh, you know there are many circumstances around um, that way of uh, of doing business and you know the, the the prices are going down clients want to pay less um, um, the, the costs are getting higher when it comes to technology sometimes and investments and and they just need to make it work but sometimes you know that uh, doesn't help um, when a team is already overworked trying to accommodate even more work just uh, you know you run the risk of getting your teams burned out so, so that's, um, yeah, I would say yeah. uh, the, the dilemma of the, some of the LSPs. <laughs> I think we, we answered this question and we click finished. Okay, <laughs> we have questions <laughs> coming, uh, so I will go on with them. Um, what, are, what is your experience with motivating the team to work collaboratively remotely, considering everyone's schedule and circumstances? For instance, we are seeing highly motivated and workday productive people becoming less motivated because another coworker is working different hours due to childcare. Then animosity kicks it. And while we try to foster understanding of circumstances, we still see motivation beginning to deteriorate in these circumstances. It's quite a long question. So basically, uh, what's your experience with motivating the team remotely? Let's let's keep it short. <laughs> I can start. Um, Please. It's it's a different setup, of course, as we we are we are discussing, and we've been in my team. We've been trying different uh, different options. We have been trying uh, virtual gathering activities, and and uh, what we've noticed that sometimes they work, sometimes they. They don't because it's difficult to keep up with this virtual activity as well. <laughs> it's uh, it's um, yeah. it's a different experience and uh, and uh, but we we there are teams that are continue doing so because they feel very much the need of uh, you know, even virtually to to get together and I think it's uh, it's important that we find the time to do so um, and. Um, I think the question was also mentioning something about um, uh, lack of lack of pro- teams' productivity due to different um, working patterns. Yes, it's uh, it's possible. This is uh, this is. Uh, uh, this is something we have experienced as well, and uh, the, the the needs have, are different. The, 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 and therefore. People are working in in different times, but but again, if there is an important project to deliver, and and the, the and it, we require to 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 work in specific hours or in specific pattern, well, we need to 
try to find a good compromise, either speaking to the managers and uh, review the resources, review the project timelines. There, there's always a solution as long as we communicate uh, with our managers the priority. I think uh, we are all in the same situation, so that, that, that it's easier to to uh, to be flexible because that's, that's, there's no other way. So <laughs> I would say it's it's important. Communication is key here, really, to determine the priorities and and. And, um, and also be understanding with the colleagues that are more in need and 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 are more um, affected by 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 the situations in different ways. Thank you, Monica. Luciana, Alessia, you want to add anything? Um, yeah, as I can add, I think you know. It, first of all, to motivate a team, right? You have to motivate people individually, so you have to feel motivated. So I think more than ever is all about respecting individuals individually like like those the different people and their different needs so what i found myself through you know since covid hit like the because i work different companies during this time um is having more one-on-ones than normal right it's just having more those connection points and and respecting what they want some people do want to talk more or longer some people don't. Some people do want to have team meetings. Some people don't. So it's just how we balance all of that and it's flexible. Uh, so I, I tend to focus on about KPIs, like I focus on outcome, right? As long as they're delivering the outcome and they are happy and we are connected, I think that's what I have to respect because, you know, right now, you know, we. We, we're all in globalization, localization. We we always had a time difference in our in our land, right? Like I can't, I I when I look back, like how many times and meetings I had, like 11 p.m., 1 and 2 a.m. in my life, I not even know how I did that. I literally don't know how I did that, and I did, and I did for a long period of time. It was like recurring meetings, right? Because we're managing people in India, and I'm here in California, so. We, I went through that that time and I do not remember complaining and I not, do, do not remember like having a problem during that time. Uh, but now we're just adding, right? Adding to that time difference, it is all those individual needs, right? Like we're all in different places in our lives. And like I said, there's like small kids, people live alone, people are sharing apartments. Um, people are having like, it's a, it was a really bad time for a lot of people. Right, that lost their loved ones. So I think for us, just really respecting all of that and find a way to motivate them individually first, and then as a team. I personally have sent them, you know, things, thank you notes. Have sent them, uh, you know, during the holidays. Have sent them, you know, like food and different things. Uh, so just to keep them engaged. Um, but but I think you know not everybody wants to have like a, a party or like we did it like last year. We used to have like Friday toasts and everybody would show up. Uh, and the longer we did, the longer you saw less people showing up because now they're doing different things. So it's just listening to those aspects and just responding to that properly. Um, I'll be very honest. Now I'm thinking again, like, can we put the team together? So we find people who live close by, we see each other wearing masks six feet apart, but at least we see each other. <laughs> so we try, we don't go into the office, um, but those are the things that I see like you can help motivate the team. Like I said, they just start motivating them individually and then um, making sure that they're sharing and that they feel safe in the environment uh, and that they feel that they are secured and connect with each other. And I think that Luciana made a really, really good point uh, when she said that the individual needs and needs on a team a level. So not everybody needs the same things. Like in the past, when I when I had teams that were remote to me, um, I think that the key was communication, checking in regularly to see how they were doing. Uh, but obviously, I was also able to go travel and meet them in person, which is something I cannot do at the moment. And um, my network at the moment is um, 26 localization specialists in 26 different countries. So um, the, the way that I'm trying to sort of um, keep everyone together as much as possible, uh, we have a formal meeting once a month 
where sort of everyone is uh, required to attend because it's, uh, you know, business related and uh, we make announcements of progress on some implementations. But then I, I uh, introduced uh, some weekly drop-in sessions. So they're not compulsory or anything, but, um, you know, the they, um, people can decide if they want to join, um, have a bit of a chit chat, have a coffee, um, obviously ask uh, work-related questions is a way to sort of feel a bit more connected uh, a bit more often and I do them in two different time zones so that I can have APAC and I can have uh, Canada and the US as well so it's more you know whoever feels the need to be there can just connect and be there and uh, it's quite interesting actually because we are all based um, um, in, in different places. But for the first time ever, there is a topic that basically brings us all together, which are keen on each other. How is How are things in your country? How are things in yours? Are you in lockdown? And then obviously we didn't have a Christmas party. Um, so, you know, I guess quite relaxed and very informal compared to companies where I worked previously. So we, we had um, a, a Christmas gathering where if people wanted, they could wear something Christmas related. And I, you know, usually in big teams, you always have people that tend to speak more and that are less shy and people that tend to keep to themselves a bit more. So I kind of introduced um, sort of a game and they could choose whether uh, to show a picture that would, uh, you know, uh, tell something about themselves. It could be a family, could be a landscape, it could be their pet and just, you know, decide to talk a little bit about themselves, something that we, we didn't know about them. Or uh, there was another game that we did that was called uh, Two Truths and One Lie. So they would need to say three sentences and um, the rest of the team would need to vote and, and basically try to, to guess. And which cover one the lie. lie. <laughs> yeah. So, it, I mean, it might sound quite silly, but, um, you know, that hour and a half that we spent together really brought us together and people learn something new um, about each other. So I think it's the little things that sometimes can make the difference, especially when we are all sort of within the four walls most of the time. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Uh, there's an amazing question that I would like to ask you. Do you think that the high focus on productivity can stand in the way of creativity and innovation? Uh, routines and eye focus are key to productivity, whereas creativity flourishes in a structured time when you have time to just sit and think. But both are needed, of course, for company success. So how, how can you balance these? Luciana, you're nodding, so you, you might have something to say. <laughs> um, I Again, I think like we all have to take responsibility, right? I do believe we need to have a downtime to think that's where the creativity, actually creativity can come anytime, anywhere. It has no place and has no time, right? Um, I personally like exercising, which I haven't been done so much as I would love to. Uh, Don't but that's tell when, me. <laughs> <laughs> but, that's, but that's when, to me, that's when I was almost like, that's my time to think creatively, like just think of problems. What if I did this way? What if I did that way? Um, it doesn't mean because I'm not exercising as much or as I would like to, that I'm not being creative anymore. I just had to find a different place to be creative, right? And it's, it, but I think it's our responsibility to set them aside. So if you're the type of the person that you need to be quiet, to have like a downtime, or if you, if you know your best time to think or find solutions is walking. So you have to stop, block your calendar, you know, it's really simple. It's tempting <laughs> to don't do it. But you go and you block your calendar. You prioritize the meetings. Uh, if you're managing people, our people are thirsty to be empowered. So what can we give to them, empower them to take the leadership role and represent the team in a certain meeting? So we don't have, I keep saying like that, that, that movie, right? This, this, the yes men. We don't have to say yes for everything. So, and I think that's the right time. It's just to be very responsible, be mindful, and really look at your time wisely and plan more than ever, like we're all talking about, I mean, I mean I'm on meetings all day long, right? Um, in some point I have to look and say, do I really need to be in this meeting? If there's three people from my team, do I need to be on that meeting as well? So you start thinking about those things and you start prioritizing your time, block your calendar 
and you go do what you know inspires you and what makes you happy, whatever that is. Even if it is lay down the couch for a minute and read a book, um, you know, it's our responsibility because no one's going to do that for us. So that's 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 what I believe it will help uh, continue, like not letting the you know you your creativity you lose that creativity time um, and really take the time that you need to be creative. And I really, Monica? really... Yeah, oh, yes. Go, go no, ahead, please. Please. <laughs> please. You, you can, it's the... very spontaneous. <laughs> I had so. the question, uh, the question is in front of me, I couldn't see Monica's face. But <laughs> you can go ahead, you can go ahead, Alessia. I just wanted to say that I really agree with what Luciana just said. Uh, and I think it's very important to balance up, you know, the time that you spend with uh, your colleagues and with other people within the company and the time that you spend, uh, you know, with yourself. So uh, recently we looked into the meeting structure actually, and we realized that we could cut down the time that we spend in the meetings and reduce the, 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 um, actually the number of people that are in the meetings. So have some meetings bi-weekly instead of weekly, for example, that saves quite a few hours a week. And um, as Luciana said, I also sometimes uh, block the calendar and I, and I take maybe an hour or two and I call it focus time. So I just basically, you know, head down and think about what I need to do, strategy, um, objectives, achievements. Um, it's very, very important as well to make sure that uh, you, you take a break every day. Um, even if it's half an hour, you go for a walk, you get some fresh air, some oxygen. And sometimes when, you, when you're out <laughs> and walk, it's when the best ideas come. So because you're just able, you know, you use part of your brains that otherwise, you know, wouldn't be stimulated. So, so yeah. So sorry for interrupting you, Monica. No, no worries. No, I, I agree with uh, with uh, with uh, with what you both said. Uh, I I also feel that um, being focused on doing something is not necessarily a um, uh, pushes. Uh, creativity away because uh, some of the best ideas that uh, of, on process improvements actually come from the people doing doing the work doing the job so while you're really doing your work you 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 can identify um, ideas to 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 improve what you're doing and in the way you're doing so I don't necessarily think that there is a such a neat difference between you know doing the job and being creative I think there's uh, there's a there's there's no there's, there might not be a difference uh, and of course I agree creativity is something like uh, uh, lateral that could uh, could happen at any time and um, in any circumstances but also doing the job doing the work because because the, the process improvement is part of uh, in, increased productivity and uh, process improvement ideas most most often come from the people who do the work mm. Yeah. yeah, my best idea comes on the train when I'm traveling to the office. Luciana, you were going to say something. No, I just love what Monica said because, um, you know, when, when you're, we're doing the job, right, it's like I think having the right tools and resources, right? So if you're doing the job and it's very manual, it's busy work, it's not necessarily good work. It's not being productive, it's just being busy. So I'm always constantly challenged any team that I manage whatever you're doing, can you do that smarter? Meaning, can you remove some of those manual pieces of the work, some of those manual elements or the repetition? Like, can we create a dashboard, right? Can, is that another team who's already doing something similar? Can we leverage what they have done? Is that a best practice that we can follow? Is that a tool that we can leverage? So to, to Monica's point, you know, you're doing the, the work and you're, you know, if you're thinking flexibly and if you're thinking like with open mind, how can I do this better, right, smarter, that's when your productivity increases as well. So I, I completely agree with you, Monica. <laughs> Thank you, Luciana. Okay, I promise we will not be talking about uh, tools or technology, but there are a couple of <laughs> questions about that. Um, one is, is there any tool to increase the productivity? And the other one, which might be related, is how to prioritize? Which tools do you use for, for that? Okay, Monica. 
Well, it uh, depends. <laughs> I guess it depends on uh, on the the area uh, of expertise and of work that uh, that that you are referring to. I can, well, I, first thing that comes to mind is that uh, uh, in localization, one one answer potentially could be machine translation <laughs> and uh, how this increased productivity if if well utilized it it well uh, if well applied to our processes it could be a possible potential answer um, in uh, in in the specific area absolutely alicia do you have anything to add on this do you use any tool like any any system getting things done or something like that gdt or any system to to get things done on your hand um on the one hand uh, what i'm trying to do um in inca is to obviously try to to use um uh, and implement technology which is something that has not happened yet we, we are in the <laughs> implementing at the moment um and uh it, machine translation, uh, translation management system and all of that. Um, but I was thinking more of um, a sort of team level or personal level. Um, I would just say that um, that is, um, we're all different. Like for example, Luciana was saying that she loves multitasking. Monica said that she'd rather focus on one thing at a time. So I think that there is not an answer um, fits all. Uh, for example, I need to, when I focus, to be more productive or to feel that I'm being more productive. Um, I like um, silence as much as possible. So any sort of music or noise can be a bit distracting. Um, when it comes to a team level, something that um, I learned um, working in, in IKEA, and uh, that is linked to what I was saying at the beginning of the, um, of the webinar uh, about the agile methodologies is that uh, we, we meet with the digital team once a month and we go through a, a sprint planning. And uh, basically they map out all of the tasks that the team is supposed to, to be running over that month. They estimate the, um, the amount of time that every task and every story, um, so the story points, um, is going to take. And, and at the end of each sprint, they basically do the retrospective and they look at uh, what has been achieved uh, what could be done better, what went very well. So that could also be, you know, um, I'm a fan of the, of Agile, to, to be fair. So that is one of the things that I think could be more um, used um, in our industry that is fairly still new, especially at the buyer side and uh, on the vendor side as well. Thank you very much. So before going back to technology, which I think we, we will at some point, there, there are two questions that are related in my opinion. One is from Valeria and her question would be, what do you think will be the post-COVID future scenario for companies? Would it be like office, work from office, work from home, an hybrid? And do you think working hybrid could increase productivity? We are so already, oh, sorry. Yeah. Sorry. We are already seeing that this is happening for some companies, so I guess that it's going to continue. But it's also true that some company probably won't won't adopt uh, the the work from home pattern, and they 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 will still allow some flexibility. So a hybrid uh, hybrid culture. I think it will. A hybrid is the is the optimal scenario because that will you have the best of the two sides and 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 you don't lose completely the the workplace reality and the contact with your colleagues you but at the same time if you can keep some flexibility and 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 you work from home at times i think it's the it's the perfect balance so but but i, I yeah i don't know what kind of um, uh, solutions will be will be applied in a, in a, in the future by by as a as a general rule i don't even know if this the, there will be space to to um, i'm thinking to regulate this this scenario it will require some time i guess especially in some countries i believe yeah absolutely absolutely luciana what do you think are you going back to the office or are you going to have an hybrid model 
Um, I, I, I don't know. Like, I don't know. I don't, I, I don't have an answer for you on that yet, but I, all I know is when I, when I look at different companies, right? In the technology, we are lucky enough that we can be in front of our computers anywhere. Uh, we already have seen companies that are open and saying, we're not going to go back to the office, right? We've seen companies just not renewing their, 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 you know, the, the buildings and the leasing, um, contracts because they want to go completely 100%, you know, everybody working from home. And you see others that are going to adapt to the hybrid. Uh, I also think it depends on the role. So you might even have a company that, you know, people can do hybrid, but certain roles will be uh, required to be in the office for different reasons. Um, and I think the difference, I would like to think to think differently to this question, which is, it depends what you want to do, right? I think um, as employees, right, and you, you're looking for a job, you now have the power to make those decisions. Do I want to go back work in person? Do I want to go back to, to just work from home forever? Do I want to be able to say I want to work twice or three times a week from the office? And you have those conversations, which, you know, a couple of years ago, depending on where you're applying, you could not even talk about that. Right. That, that, that's what their yeah. job is. You're either moving and you're in person or you're not even being considered for the role. So now those conversations are, you know, happening. Um, and I, I not even want to say more often, they're literally happening, which is certain roles, as we know, in different companies, it would not be a possibility before. So I would like to frame and more answer that question on that angle. Right. Because you have the power to make those decisions uh, and look for different roles in different places. That's very true. That's very true. Because I remember in the past, you know, working from home and that level of flexibility. Again, I'm talking about LSP side. Um, I had that con those conversations in the past when I was recruiting for project managers for the weekend shift. Because obviously, you know, I couldn't expect people to work a weekend shift and, and work from the office. So they were... Um, you know, flexible in terms of working hours and the company was flexible in terms of location for the Saturday and Sunday. Then the rest of the week, they would be required to work from the office. But then, you know, some of them had kids, so they had a bit of more of a flexible pattern. But if you allow for that level of flexibility, then, you know, going back to the uh, happy employee and the appreciation, they would easily work an extra couple of hours and not even feel it. Um, and um, I think that personally, uh, nowadays after, you know, COVID, uh, even the companies that didn't want to think about remote work, they've been forced to. So the future of work is probably something that all, all of the companies are discussing. They might not get to the same outcome. Um, but personally, I think that a mix would be ideal so that, um, you know, if you need to make yourself available for important meetings, um, and make sure that, that you're visible and you are there, but you also have the flexibility to, um, you know, most of us um, have relocated abroad. So, uh, you know, you might want to spend a long weekend with your family or be able to, to travel and, um, and spend the weekend somewhere and then work a day from a cafe or, a, I mean, that sort of thing. I think that flexibility... Um, in my opinion, would help productivity because you would be working happier. So, yeah, I agree. And I guess that you are looking forward to go to the office for the first time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> okay. <I'm not> <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. There's an interesting question about the difference between home office, so working from home, and telecommute, so working from anywhere. Do you have anything to say on this? What's the difference in terms of productivity, if you want? Again, I think it's um, all down to perception. If you're focused and you want to work, it doesn't matter where you are. Um, it, maybe people think that if you're at home, then it's quieter, it's silent, and, um, and you can focus better. But if you are somewhere, I don't know, in a holiday house or you know, looking at the beach, why would you be less productive? You you might actually try to uh, speed up so that then you can you can go for a walk or you can go for a swim. I just think it's all down and once again to to trust uh, and perception. I guess I love the idea. 
if Sorry. you're working as a as a, as a freelance, you 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 have in you already built this this work patterns of working from anywhere. If you if you if you have a role that uh, for for a company, it, it, I see it a bit more challenging to, because there are stricter pattern and there are meetings that you need to attend. And if you are at the beach, it's probably <laughs> more difficult to accommodate. So, so maybe that's the, just a little difference that I would that that comes to mind. But but as Alessia was saying, it's really a matter of uh, uh, organized getting. Up getting organized and 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 make things happen um happen yeah totally agree and there's a comment on that and then we let luciana talks if she wants so there's no working from home or working remotely anymore <laughs> it's simply working but i love the idea of me working at the beach and looking <laughs> forward to jump in the water like you are you are right like now are, exactly yeah i will go uh, right after this event i i did it last summer guys i i took my laptop to the beach and you know till you know everybody goes on holiday in august in italy so july was relatively quiet and sometimes i took meetings and video calls from there and it was fine <laughs> Good. Well done. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I think what Alicia said, it's spot on, right? It's like perception. I remember my first job in local, when I work on globalization, localization, that the perception of my friends and other peers who didn't know what globalization, localization meant, it was, oh, you're always traveling, so you can work from <laughs> anywhere. Like, and, and I had to travel often. And, and it was very interesting that depending on the country, they will, they, will, they will make comments, right? But any time I mentioned that I went to Brazil, in, it was a perception that I was not working. So I passed the team and I start getting like a little, you know, talking about background. So when we resume, I, I used to put just the company name on the background sometimes. People would not know where I am, right? And I would just say that I am at home and I just wanted to use that, uh, but I was not. So it's all about perception, right? And so I, sometimes it's, right? If you say where you are, you know, people will assume certain things because of that place. Uh, so I think it's all about creating that trust, right? And the delivery. Um, and it doesn't matter where you are, but there is difference. Like Monica said, if you're a freelancer, like the expectations, you are basically anywhere, right? But if you're remote work and you're working from home, the expectation you are at home. But home, as we know, can be anywhere, right? So if you're traveling and you can actually manage to attend the meetings and continue to do your, your job, that is no harm on that. Um, and, you know, and sometimes you don't need to communicate to everybody, but you need to communicate to your manager, uh, which I have done in the past uh, when I had people saying I had people from my team in the past that were from Hawaii. And every time they said they're going to Hawaii, everybody was asking me questions. And I just told this person, you just don't say you're going to Hawaii. You just say working from home. And that stopped, right? So it's, again, that's what I like what Alicia says about perception. But it's about also, you know, building trust among peers and us as manager, you know, leading by example and help uh, in, make everybody feel included regardless of where they are. Even as Alicia was at the beach, and I'm sure she was very productive while she was there. It was actually my line manager's idea because it was July. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Everybody in Sweden and in the Netherlands was on holiday. And she was like, well, take it easy, you know, just, uh, and I thought, yeah, why not? I mean, let's go there and yeah. have a nice view while I'm, I'm working and speaking to people. I'm, so I'm, I'm sure home. you came back help, happier. You came back, you know, like refreshed, recharged. And that's what we should care, right? And more creative, I believe. Yeah, but I should also say that I didn't travel somewhere. It's like the beach is like literally four minutes walk from my place in Italy. So, it's Thank it you, was very really tempting. <laughs> Thanks for sharing. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much. There's another question here. Uh, would you still have the, the same managerial approaches if you were to work in a much smaller company? That's interesting for me as well. How would you imagine productivity uh, in a company with less than 50 employees? Mm. It's difficult for all of you because you work in huge companies. I did work for, for very small companies at the beginning, the first two companies I worked for, like we're talking about 15 years ago, I'm, I'm, I know, but uh, I think that the principle is the same. It's just that in a smaller company, you have um, different challenges. 
So, for example, in a global company, you won't be struggling to, um, you know, convince the translators to take on uh, more work because they they haven't got paid for the last two months in voices. <laughs> um, but you get the chance to, in a smaller company, you get the chance to know people better and spend more time with them physically as well. Although uh, during COVID times, some you know, I know it's not the case. So for me, the, the same principles um, still stand. You know, uh, give trust, give responsibility. Just tell people uh, where you want to get as a company, what the objectives are, and just um, let them find a way to get there. So I'm, th there was a quote from Steve Jobs. I'm, I'm hoping I'm not getting that wrong, but he was saying something about... Like, listening. Sorry? I was, he's not listening, don't worry. No, the, please <laughs> um, go ahead. So he, he, he was saying something like, you don't hire skilled people to tell them what to do, but you hire them so that they tell you what needs to be done. So that's, you know, that's the key there, I think. Absolutely. Maybe I come from a smaller company, maybe the... The difficult thing is to to find the time maybe to talk with people because you have to wear, to wear different hats during the day. That, that that is my experience at least. I would I wish I could talk more with my team. Luciana, what do you say? You have worked in huge companies, but you know it's interesting because you know work I you know all my career I have worked in big companies, but at the same time you work in small teams. Right. So if you think as our teams, you know, you have small teams and, and you know, as a company, <laughs> like you're delivering your, you know, uh, if I think that way, um, you know, the way you can actually do uh, focus on productivity is really making sure that people are prioritizing the work and then we are focused on the outcome. Like if you know what the outcome is and what the business challenge you're trying to solve and we have everyone focused to achieve that, solve it for that, you know, looking for the customer point of view, and that's what you're trying to solve, you're being productive. So I think that's what I, I would say in by looking into, you know, how we manage small teams. And I did work in the beginning, like in small company uh, before, but it was, you know, it was in person. We are always in person. And I will tell you, like I mentioned, being Brazilian, um, we're always chatting, we're always talking. <laughs> so, you know, when you see it, you have to be extremely productive and, and focused, right? So uh, that's, that's my experience with managing like small, small, small teams that could be relevant for a small company. Yep, absolutely. Monica? Do you wish to add something? Yeah, I I used to manage my small localization team in in the startup in Rome, and I and everybody at the time was already working from home, so we were um, <laughs> very ahead of the games. And but I think trusting each other is very important. Having clear goals is very important because this is where if you're working from home and you don't have um, a lot of contact uh, with the, with the team it's it's easy to, to to lose track and it is important to have communicate to have constant communication point meeting and uh, but also cl be clear on on what the goals are and and also um, people need to take accountability of what they are uh, what they take on and what they will deliver and you need to check that this is actually in place and trust the, trust the team that they will deliver what they need i would say but but again it requires some efforts managing uh, building trust there are people that trust by default and people that needs to you need to gain their trust so they need to have, have evidence that uh, they can be trusted and uh, they try to understand what your manager style is and, and act accordingly. That would be my piece of advice. Thank you very much. Uh, I have a question myself. Uh, so with remote working and many companies going full remote or hybrid, I think you, you have more access to talents everywhere in the world. And talent management is strictly related to, to productivity as well company-wise. What do you think? Uh, are you experiencing this? Are you seeing a shift in, in this in relation to, to the way talents are found and hired in your companies? In relation to the fact uh, to the work from home, you mean? Yeah, the fact that you can 
we are now getting more used to to hire people from remote as well. This is a change that we are not seeing yet, uh, but okay. that I would like to see in the future. Because even if I'm allowed to work from home in Italy due to the pandemic, my role is based in Sweden, so that's where I'm supposed to be. And uh, if I'm recruiting for a localization specialist in South Korea, that's where the, the person needs to be based and uh, ideally in the city where the office is. So I don't think we are quite there yet, but I don't know. I'm hoping that there would be some changes as, um, as the outcome of all of this. I don't see any any con concrete changes, but for sure there's a there's a there's a push from from people to 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 go in this direction, and uh, yeah, I'll be curious to see what happens in the future, because for sure this is uh, this is something that uh, it, sometimes it seems very easy to be able to to you know to relocate in to anywhere but there are implications that need to be understood clearly and it's not as uh, as automatic for a company to just place people anywhere uh, it, they are it's much much more complex than it seems yeah, yeah of and course sometimes you might sometimes you might have you know the right um profile the right talent but you know the the, the personal circumstances of that candidate uh, wouldn't allow him or her to to move to that specific place so you miss out the opportunity, I mean, both as an individual and as a company. So. Of course, linguists need, needs to be in the, usually they are in the country where the language is spoken, of course. Maybe that's, that can be true for project managers. I don't know, it was just wondering. Not necessarily in, in, our, in our case, no. Okay. I'm asking to rephrase a question because I'm not sure I understood it correctly. So we've mentioned project managers in, in the comment before and, and now as well. How did the role of project managers evolved uh, with, with this situation currently uh, in relation to, you know, to the pandemic, but also to working from home and to productivity as well? Maybe, Alessia, you have experience with an SLV as well. Did you see any change, even if you're not um, working with that NSP anymore? Yeah, so I'm thinking, um, for me, there has been a shift um, in the past 10, 15 years in the way that um, I recruited, for example, because um, um, 10, 15 years ago, I would be focusing on uh, a profile of a project manager with uh, experience or um, focusing on the soft skills, focusing on time management, um, whereas nowadays, it's really important to to have uh, candidates that have um, that are tech savvy, so that know what machine translation is, that ideally have experience with that, that are able to work or have um, are familiar with one of the translation management systems that are uh, present in the market, that sort of profile. So the component of technology is something that I think in the past ten years has been really really important, and. Uh, I would say it's the same for for the linguists, actually. Yeah, so I, would, I don't know how much time I have. I don't want to. <laughs> oh, wanna we have four minutes way. left. So, if any of you want to, to to comment on my question, or we can go for a round of closing remarks if you want. As Monica, you want. yeah, yeah. Let's no. start from you. Uh, to, uh, to on the project management or on the closing remarks? Sorry. The, if you want, if you want the project management, we have three more no, minutes. For the no, I don't, I don't. I don't really have much to add to what Alessia was saying about the about the the, um, the project management and the linguist uh, evolution of the roles. I think the technology is what plays the major role there, and uh, and. Uh, um, and even if we are um, a client-based team and we, we have our internal um, uh, tools and uh, processes, but we always look out for the industry and what happens uh, to make sure that we are keeping the team up to date constantly. And uh, yeah, that's my comment. Thank you. So I would go for a round of closing remarks if you want. Luciana, do you have anything to suggest or to comment on in relation to productivity to close this conversation? Yes, uh, for me, I think that, you know, pr uh, like I, we said in the beginning, you know, productivity can mean different things to different people. 
um, at the end of the day, it's all about individual individualization, right? It's how you get different people on the individual level uh, happy and productive and feel and this person feels included. And because then when we put everybody together and put the team together and organization together, uh, they all understand each other and they all be treated equally, right? And I think that's that's the key piece. And we will always, as humans, be trying to do things better and faster and sometimes doing more things, even if it is on personal uh, lives, right? Like we wanted to travel more, you want to enjoy more. There's, We all have our personal um, aspirations and we're always striving to do something better. So I think that translates on how we work. And I truly believe it is our own responsibility to take control of our own lives and really talk, you know, especially at work, talk to the manager and ask for help to prioritize, to help focus, to understand the goals and really making sure that you block your calendar, you know, take the time for yourself, take the time to enjoy your family and, and take the time to go for a walk and make whatever you have to do to make you happy. That's my, my advice from talking around productivity. Thank you very much. Monica. Just I would say, know yourself, understand how you can take the most out of the time that you have available and respect your uh, biological rhythms and, uh, and understand where you are more, more productive than in, in the day. Thank you very much. Alisa, you started, so it's your right to, to close it. <laughs> Thank you. So we've been focusing on, you know, productivity. And I think one of the key words that, um, that, we, that we discussed was change, the new normal, the new reality. But um, our industry is changing regardless of COVID. It's uh, continuously evolving. So um, I just wanted to close with, um, you know, uh, a word of, wisdom, if I'm allowed to say, um, to not only the project managers, but also the linguists that might be listening to us because their role has also changed and evolved uh, during the years. So um, my, my closing statement is uh, don't be scared of change. See change as an opportunity. I think that the recipe for success in our industry is to have a flexible mindset, um, try and understand as much as possible the bigger picture, try and to understand the market that you're part of, be, be curious, um, try to learn fast and be adaptable. Because uh, one of the, the biggest fears in relation to productivity is that if we become more productive, there is less space for, for human work in our industry, but that's, that will never be the case as long as you adapt and evolve um, together with the industry, there will always be opportunities. That's amazing. Thank you very much. So we are one minute after the closing time. I would really like to thank you for being here today. Uh, recording will be ready very soon. Thank you very much for your insights. Thank you, Luciana. Thank you, Monica. Thank you, Alessia. Alessia, for me and you and Monica, it's time to go and have dinner, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> some, some personal time for us. Luciana, have a nice day because it's morning where you are. Thank you so much for being here. And thank you for to the audience for, for your person and attending. Thank, thank you. Have a nice day. Thank you for having us. Thank it's you. been an absolute pleasure.